no mind and whispers of the unknown i had explained earlier no mind is not the extension of the mind no mind is the dissolution of the mind and whispers of the unknown always come as new through no mind you never know what the unknown and unknowable wants to communicate to you really you never know what the unknown and unknowable wants to communicate to you you have to be open and utterly vulnerable however the people never accept the new in the first instance there is always a resistance in accepting new and in fact we meet everything new reluctantly with fear rather than with joy and willingness the new never arises out of you instead it comes from the beyond it always comes as the whispers of the unknown it is not part of you your whole past is at stake the new is discontinuous with you hence the fear arises you have lived in one way your entire thinking has been in one way you have made a comfortable life out of your beliefs and then something new knocks at the door your whole past pattern is going to be disturbed if you allow the new to enter you will never be the same again the new will transform you there is fear bound to happen you cannot imagine anything beyond your cognition it is risky one never knows where you will end with the new the old is known and familiar too you have lived with it for long you are acquainted with it the new is unfamiliar it may be the friend it may be the enemy who knows and there is no way to know the only way to know is to allow it to happen this is the reason there is apprehension or uneasiness and you cannot remain rejecting it either the old has not given you yet what you seek it is true the old has not given you yet what you seek the old has been promising but the promises have not been fulfilled the old is familiar yet still it has been miserable maybe the new is going to be uncomfortable but there is a possibility it may bring bliss to you so you cannot reject it either and you cannot accept it either this makes you waver you tremble great anguish arises in your being it is natural nothing has gone wrong this is how it has always been and this is how new will always be try to understand the appearance of the new everybody in the world wants to become new because nobody is satisfied with the old nobody can ever be satisfied with the old because whatsoever is you have known it once known it has become repetitive this is what happens with your love life with your day to day life once known it has become repetitive once known it has become boring and monotonous you want to get rid of it you want to explore you want to adventure you want to become new and yet when the new knocks at your door you shrink back you withdraw you hide in the old and go back to your past 
this is the dilemma how do we become transformed only when you embrace the unknown and you with trust in the existence that transformation happens existence does no wrong and everybody wants to become new courage is needed no ordinary courage instead extraordinary courage is needed you have to stake all that you have and the world is full of cowards this is the reason people have stopped growing how can you grow if you are a coward with each new opportunity you shrink back you close your doors how can you grow then how can you be you only pretend to be and because you cannot grow you have to find substitutes for growth you cannot grow inwardly but your bank balance can grow so you focus on bank balance so to your properties can grow and you go on boasting for this this is the very poor substitute but everyone does that it needs no courage it is perfectly good and adjusted with your cowardliness your bank balance goes on growing and you start thinking that you are growing in fact you go on shrinking within you become more respectable your name and fame go on growing and you think you are growing inwardly with your bank balance and properties you think you are growing those who know how to live or what life is prefer to live in the storms of life those who know how to live or what life is prefer to live in the storms of life you are simply deceiving yourself your name is not you so to your fame is not you your bank balance is not your being but if you think of the being you start shaking remember if you want to grow there then you have to drop all cowardliness it is said those who have who know the ways and means of life prefer to live in the storms shaur zindagi hai jinne toofano mein rehte hain those who know how to live those who know the ways and means of life in reality always prefer to live in the storms those who know the ways of life live amidst storms of life how do we become new we do not become new of ourselves newness comes from the beyond beyond refers to god newness comes from existence mind is always old mind is never new mind is the accumulation of the past newness comes from the beyond it is a gift from the unknown and unknowable it comes from the beyond and it is of the beyond the unknown and unknowable the beyond has made ingress into you it has ingress into you because you are never sealed and set apart you are not an island you may have forgotten the beyond you may have forgotten and yet still pretend that you know and remember every day but how do you remember is asking for this or that is your way of remembering god the real way of remembering god is your thankfulness for all that you are being showered moment to moment remember this always the real way of remembering god is your thankfulness for all that you have been for all that you are being showered moment to moment 
and remember the beyond has not forgotten you. The child may have forgotten the mother, the mother has not forgotten the child. The part may have started thinking itself separate from the whole. However, the whole knows that you are not separate. The whole has ingressed into you. It is still in contact with you. It is in communion with you. That is why new goes on coming, although you never welcome it. It comes every morning. It comes every evening. It comes in a thousand and one ways. If you have eyes to see, you will see it continuously coming to you. God goes on showering on you bounties in myriad ways. But you are enclosed in your past. You are almost in a kind of grave. You have become insensitive. And because of your cowardliness, you have lost all sensitivity. To be sensitive means the new will be felt. And the thrills of the new, the passions and the adventure will arise. And you will start moving into the unknown not knowing where you are going. Mind thinks it is madness. Mind thinks it is not rational to leave the old. But God is always new. God means newness. That is why we cannot use the past tense or future tense for God. We cannot say God was. We cannot say God will be either. We can only use the present God is. It is always fresh and virgin and it has access in you. Remember, anything new coming in your life is a message from God. If you accept it, you are religious. If you reject it, you are non-religious. Man needs just to relax a little more to accept the new. He has to open up a little more to let the new in, give way to God entering you. This is the meaning of the prayer of meditation. Prayer and meditation implies you are open to new. You open up and say, and you say, come in. You welcome the new when it knocks at your door to enter your being. You say that I have been waiting and I am thankful that you have come. Always receive the new with great joy. Even if sometimes the new leads you into inconvenience, still the new is worth it. Even if sometimes the new leads you into trouble, still it is worth it because only through errors one learns and only through difficulties one grows. The new will bring difficulties that is why you choose the old and the old never brings any difficulties. It is a consolation, it is a shelter and only you accept the new deeply and totally it can transform you. It can bring the new in your life. The new always comes. You can either accept it or reject it. If you reject it, you remain a stone, closed and lifeless. If you receive it, you become a flower. Your petals start opening. And in that opening, there is celebration. There is joy. There is blissfulness. Only the new can transform you. There is no other way to transformation. But remember it has nothing to do with you and your efforts. But to do nothing does not cease to act. For new you have to act without will or direction or impulse from your past. The search for the new cannot be an ordinary search. It is for the new. How can you search for it? You do not know it and you have never met it. 
The search for the new is going to be just an open exploration. One knows not. One has to start in a state of not knowing and then move innocently like a child, thrilled with every possibility. And remember there are infinite possibilities. You cannot do anything to create the new because whatsoever you do will be of the old arising from the past but that does not mean that you have to cease to act it is to act without will and direction or impulse from your past therefore act without any will or direction or impulse from the past but act meditatively and spontaneously let the moment decide itself you do not impose your decisions because the decision will arise from the past and it will destroy the new. You just act in the moment like a child. Utterly abandon yourself to the moment and then you will find everyday new openings, new light and new insights for you. And those new insights will go on changing you. One day suddenly you will see that you are each moment new. Old no more lingers or hangs around you like a cloud. You are like a dewdrop, fresh, young and overflowing. Remember a Buddha lives moment to moment. Like a majestic wave one day he appears on the life's ocean. With great joy and dance he comes up with hopes and dreams to touch the stars then the play begins and lasts from the moment and then the wave disappears into the vastness of the ocean it will come again to have another day once again it will dance and then again it will be gone so is God it comes disappears comes again and disappears so is a Buddha consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Each moment it comes, acts, responds and is gone. Again it comes and then it is gone. It is atomic. Between two moments there is a gap. In that gap Buddha disappears. I say a word to you and then I disappear in my silence. I say a word to you and then I disappear in my silence. Then I say another word and I am there. And then again I disappear in my silence. When I dissolve in my silence, I am no more physically. There is a subtle presence, nameless, formless and bodiless. Each time I respond to you, then I am no more. The response is again there and I am no more. Those intervals or those empty spaces keep one utterly fresh because only death can keep you absolutely alive and fresh. You die once after 60, 70 years. Naturally all these years you accumulate thoughts, emotions, conditionings as garbage. A Buddha on the contrary dies every moment. No garbage is accumulated and nothing is ever possessed. That is why Buddha says to Subhati that to possess mark is to be a fraud because possession is always of the past. Not to possess marks is to be a Buddha. Just think of it. Each moment arising, just like a breath, you breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in again and you breathe out again. Each breath coming in is life and each breath going out is death. You are born with each coming breath and then you die with each outgoing breath. Let each moment be a birth and a death, then you will be new and fresh. But this new has nothing to do with your past. 
your will, your direction, your impulse. It is to act spontaneously. It is not rejection but response. All that is gone out of the past is old, so that one can, one can of oneself do nothing new. To see this and to be done with the old and with the past and with you, that is all we can do. But it is everything, it is all upon the ending of the old, the new may follow, it may not. It does not matter. The very wish for the new is an old wish. Then one is utterly open. Even to ask for the new is an old wish. A Buddha is not even asking for the new. There is absolutely no desire for anything that it should be like this or like that. If there is desire, you will manage it like that. You will impose yourself upon it. See life desirelessly. See life without any con conditions. See life as it is yathabhutam and you will be continuously renewed and re rejuvenated. That is the real meaning of resurrection. If you understand this, you will be free from memory, psychological memory that is. Memory is a dead thing. Memory is not truth and can never be. Because truth is always alive, truth is life, memory is persistence of that which is no more. It is living in a ghost world, but it contains us. It is our prison. In fact, it is us. Memory creates the obstacle, the complex called I, the ego, and naturally this false entity called I is continuously afraid of death. That is why you are afraid of the new. This I is afraid, not really you. The being has no fear, but the ego has fear. Because the ego is very afraid of dying. It is artificial, it is arbitrary, it is put together. It can fall apart any moment. And when the new enters, there is fear. The ego is afraid. It may fall apart. Somehow it has been managing to keep itself together to keep itself in one piece and now something new comes in. You will be a shattering thing. That is why you cannot accept the new with joy. The ego cannot accept its own death willingly. How can it accept its own death with joy? No, it can never accept. Unless the understanding dawns that you are not ego, you will not be able to receive the new. Once you have seen that ego is your past, memory and nothing else, that you are not your memory, that memory is just a biocomputer, that is a machine, a mechanism, utilitarian, but you are beyond it. You are consciousness, not memory. Memory is content in consciousness. However, you are consciousness itself. For example, you see somebody walking on the road, you remember the face, but you cannot remember the name. If you are the memory, you should remember the name too. But you say, I recognize the face, but I do not remember the name. Then you start looking into your memory. You go inside your memory lanes, you look to this side, to that side and suddenly the name bubbles up and you say, yes, this is his name. Memory is your record. And you are the one who is looking into the record. So you are not the memory itself. And it happens many times that if you become tense in trying to remember a name or something else, it becomes difficult to remember because the very tension does not allow the memory to release the relevant information to you. 
You try again and again to remember the name and it does not surface and you say it is just on the tip of the tongue. You know that you know but yet still the name is not coming up. Now this is strange. If you are memory then who is preventing you and why is it not coming up? And who is this saying I know but still it is not coming to the surface? And then you try harder and more difficult it becomes. Then fed up with the whole thing, you go to the garden for a walk and suddenly looking at the rose bush, it is there, it has surfaced. Your memory is not you, you are consciousness. Memory is content, but memory is the whole life energy of ego. Memory is of course old and it is afraid of new. Memory is the function of ego. The new may be disturbing and it may not be digestible. The new may bring some trouble as well. You will have to shift and reshift yourself. You will have to readjust yourself. And that seems arduous. To be new, one need to become disidentified with the ego. Once you are disidentified with the ego, you do not care whether it dies or lives. In fact, you know that whether it lives or dies, it is already dead. It is a mechanism. Use it, but do not be used by it. The ego is continuously afraid of death because it is arbitrary. Hence, there is a constant fear. Ego does not arise out of being. It cannot arise out of being. Because being is life, how can life be afraid of death? Life knows nothing of death. It arises out of the arbitrary, the artificial, this somehow put together, the false, the pseudo. And yet it is just such letting go. Just that death that makes a man alive. To die in the ego is to be born into being, into God. The new is not only the message instead, it is the messenger for God as well. The new is the gospel. Listen to the new, move with the new, and moving with the new always makes you afraid. In spite of fear, go with the new, and your life will become richer, and you will be able oh, one day to release the hidden inner splendor.